Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. Today, it's another top five most carried knives. This is for May of 2021. I do these monthly. It's coming out a couple days early this month because it's the 29th right now. Tomorrow, the 30th, is going to be Bruise and Blades, so I can't do it then. May 31st, I'm going to be bringing you a knife that's being released that very day, so I want to hold that video until, until May 31st. So you get a couple days early this time. Doing it in the kind of new style format where I'm going to have five knives. Yes, there's six if you can count because there's an honorable mention in this one. I always do a watch at the end because I know you guys don't all care about watches, but some of you do, a lot of you do. So I'd like to include a watch, but I put it at the end. And also now I'm going to put in between there another EDC item. So I like to lay everything out here so you guys can see it. You guys don't like it when I bring them individually. So there are some kind of spoilers here, but let's get going with the knives as usual in no particular order except the number one. And these are things I carry for myself, stuff I'm not just carrying for review. A lot of times stuff that I got in for review does slip in there, but I honestly have been doing this long enough. I don't need to carry a knife a whole ton for the review. So sometimes, yes, it's technically for review, but I'm grabbing it for me because I really like it. So no particular order except number one. What is the honorable mention? We'll do that one first. That would be the Civivi Elementum button lock. Um, I like this knife. But uh, I am still trying to, I carry it sometimes for myself, but really I don't think if I was reviewing it, I'd carry it as much. So that's why I put an honorable mention. It tied with another knife on here, so I couldn't really decide which one, because I don't know why exactly I carry this so much. I think maybe it is partly just because of the review. It is really cool. It does have a button lock. It is a larger elementum. I love all those things about it. But as I've said before, when I said in the unboxing, and I will say in the full review that I'm doing later on this month, they wanted me to hold it off until they're back in stock because they sold out wicked fast. Um, it's only a button lock, and I don't love that. If it had a thumb stud, man, I'd be crushing all over this thing. And I know everybody says, well, you can't open it with the button lock. You have to activate the button lock to open it. So that's why it does a thumb stud. Okay. I still don't get really why they did the button lock method oh, only. I don't know why it locks closed. I do think in some places that's going to be considered a gravity knife, which is fine in New York now, ironically. But um, yeah, I just, I like it. It's growing on me, but still Every time I carry it, I wish it had a thumb stud or even a flipper, preferably a thumb stud, but something. I did see in the Civivi Fall catalog, there are some other knives that appear to be button locks and have thumb studs and or flippers. So I'm really excited about those. Uh, I'll definitely be grabbing them because I do love the concept of a Civivi button lock, but I just wish it had another opening method. So there's that. Now, stuff that I've definitely been carrying just for myself, and this is the one that tied with the Elementum. Uh, the Launch 11, I had one of these. I sold it and then managed to get another one. It was in a trade that I just kind of threw, the guy threw it in to make the money work. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll just sell it again. Because I had one and I sold it, I think, because I was being, I don't know, snobby, I think, because I have a lot of Protex and Microtex. And Kershaw launches are awesome, but I just was like, I don't know. I said, I like my other stuff better. Um, no, I... Now that I have one back, I kind of got it in the trade. I took it out of the box. It wound up setting like within arm's reach and I kept grabbing it lots and lots and lots of mornings and it wound up staying in my pocket all day. Just a great little three inch auto, uh, about a hundred bucks for one of these. And you're looking at a CPM 154 steel. So not, not bad there at all. Uh, made in the US. It's got the little Star Wars-esque logo to indicate that it's an in-house design. And it's just a really, really good Kershaw. It's it's definitely my favorite launch by a million miles. I think, I think I've at least handled all of them. Uh, maybe the launch one or two, the, the larger one, maybe that, that's just as good. But I don't know. I really, really like this. Just very slicey, very good EDC size. Really like it a lot. And price, you know, is uh, is not too bad at all. Um, next up, again, these are in no order except for the final one. I'm just going to grab this. Uh, the Sebenza 31 with the micarta inlays, which answers the question, sort of. I did a video a while ago with this and my Nkosi that also has the inlays. Um, I said I could only keep one. Which one should I keep? Um, th the choice was both. <laughs> so I'm not... I can't. And that, that was the number one choice that you guys gave anyway, was just keep them both and... Yeah, I sold something else instead. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to keep it around. I have not even had this the entire month, and I've still been just carrying the snot out of it. I really, really, really like it. Um, I don't 
know, I still don't know if I like it better than my Nkosi. I'm probably carrying it more than my Nkosi. Just, I don't think I carry my Nkosi at all since I've gotten this. But I think it's just a newness factor. I'm still not prepared to say I like it better than the Nkosi. Because I used to not really be a big Sabenza 31 fan. But I think all the stuff I didn't like about the Sabenza 31 is the the inlays. And I do have to apologize to whoever I was arguing with in the comments. Yeah, my Nkosi pocket clip does fit this. I got in my head somewhere that Lynch said they didn't fit. The Nkosi one didn't fit the Sabenza one. This is off my Nkosi. It does fit. Uh, and maybe it was the minis I was getting confused with, the smaller ones. I don't know, but anyway, yeah. Whoever I was arguing about that, yeah, you were right. It does It does fit. I did finally just give up and try it, and it did. It, it was difficult to get on, I will say. They're not looking forward to taking it off. I did can't kind of squeeze it on there, but um, it, it does fit. So, uh, But yeah, and it's just somebody having a Sabenz on your pocket. I don't know. I still like my Tanto blades better. Tanto, sorry, everybody snaps at me when I say Tanto. I don't I'm going to keep saying Tanto. The more you snap at me, the more I'm going to keep saying it. And once these come out in S45VN and a Tanto Tanto, I will I will probably sell this one and get another one. But yeah, still S35. I'm still disappointed about that because most other Chris Reeves are have switched over to S45 except the Sabenza. Um, this one, oh, by the way, they're 425 standard price. This was a bit more because it's got the inlays. I think these are 550 so they, they're pretty pricey. Next up, the big one, the big one. It is the Benchmade Adamas, the full size. I know everybody's raving on the mini Adamas. I like the full size Adamas better. I just did my top ten of 2020 so far. There are a few knives on here that were in that video, uh, but unsurprisingly. But yeah, I like the bigger one better. I did finally get a chance to briefly handle a mini Adamas. I think maybe even after I did that top 20 video after I recorded it, but. Uh, I just like this better, I think, because it's still got, even the small one still has that big, beefy blade and the thick handle. I just think it makes more sense on the bigger one. You know, go big or go home kind of thing to me. But yeah, 212 bucks. Crew wear, one of my favorite steels. And just when I want something big, I just keep reaching for this. It's it's my favorite of my large knives at the moment. I will be doing the Battle to the Death with this and the 8010. A lot of you suggested that. I think that is an excellent idea. And I will definitely be doing that. Um... Because I don't know, I really love the 8010, but uh, this is uh, this is pretty darn cool also. Other than being big bruisers, pretty different personalities, so it'll be a pretty interesting one to do, I think. But the Ergos are great, I really love the look of this G10. I just think it looks fantastic, especially in the new Glorious 4K. But um, I, I do like it a lot, it's it's just a great knife. And I think for 212 bucks, I know sometimes people complain about the butterfly tax or whatever. I think that's a very, very fair price for this. I really do. For that really, really nice G10 crew wear and a whole lot of it, acres of it, I think uh, I think that's a pretty fair price. Uh, next up, we have the CRKT Pilar 3. So this is the D2 version, by the way. These are 52 bucks in the D2. I think they're 40 for the 8CR. Get one of these if you can get it, unless you just really hate gold backspacers. That's one way you can tell it's a D2. But the ergos on this thing are just so good. But it's a fox nays design. That's to be expected. Uh, what I did not expect is just how smooth this thing is. I have never torn it completely apart or done anything to it. And man, you spidey flick it, thumb flick it, whatever you want to do. It's just so snappy. Stainless steel frame lock. Not particularly light for the size that it is. But this is another one that's just like, if I see it, I put it in my pocket for at least a chunk of the day. I do work at home, so I do change knives once, maybe twice a day sometimes, uh, depending. But because I'm, I work at home and I see, my, I can see my knives and you see one, you're just like, ah, oh, I gotta grab it. And this is one that I just, I grab a whole lot. Really, really do like it a lot. It's, I like it more and more every single day. It's just a, it's just an awesome little knife, and I think definitely, for me, best thing CRKT has made so far this year, and definitely, so far ever, and definitely I think it's going to be in my budget knife of the year. It's a high contender for budget knife of the year. So that leaves us with only one, and another one I have not even had the whole month, but one that I still keep grabbing, and that would be the Demco 8020. So I got this in both configurations, in the shark's foot, as they call it, or the clip point, I have chosen the shark's foot, and this one is definitely mine now because I've carried it so much that I, I was going to give one of them away, whichever one I chose not to keep. 
I've used this enough. It's mine now. It's just the way it is. So I didn't drop it in a toilet or anything. There's nothing like no untoward, no, un, no like, you know, uh, untold weird story about it. Nothing untowards has occurred with it. I just, I've used it enough that I don't want to give it away to one of you guys. But uh, the action on it is just so good. It's so slim. I really like it. Now this uh, shark's foot takes up a bit more room in the pocket, but it's still not enough to bother me. And I just love the look of this one. And again, I still don't know which one I prefer overall. I still think it would be a coin flip situation if I was buying one. But um, this is the one that I use the most, so it's the one that's mine. Uh, so yeah, uh, some people are complaining because for 150 bucks, OS 10A and Grivery, you know what? I found neither to be a problem. I did uh, strop this up once. I haven't had to sharpen it. I think the edge retention on it has been excellent. I've had other OS 10As from the same factory because they use the same factory as Cold Steel. They've always been great. I've put a lot of miles on that OS 10A from that factory, and I have zero issues with it. I think people just see the OS and get get their panties in a wad. It's it's not OS 8. It's not the same, and the A makes a difference. It's a different steel, and it's uh, it's better. Very similar steel, but I I find it to be a lot better. So I really like it made in taiwan and it's just uh it's super cool i really like these little things and i guarantee you they're not available yet so i hate to put something in the most carry that isn't available yet but by the time a lot of you guys are watching this it'll be blade show and you'll be able to buy them at blade show and a lot of people will be buying them then i think they'll be popping up on websites like the week after that so um do it quick they're gonna go i know he made a lot of them uh but it's they're probably still gonna go fast but there'll be more and at later on in the summer so because you know their production can be made in taiwan so that is it for the knives so if you're only here for knives you can stop now uh but the other edc item uh tactile turn pen this is the mini bolt action not the new skinny one i don't love that the new slim one has a milled clip i like one of the things i like about this clip is that kind of loop over clip i don't like the fully milled clip that's one thing i didn't like about the side bolt um, not an inexpensive pen, 100 or 120 if you get that Timascus bolt like I did. I got this used. Um, I don't think if I bought a new one, I would I would opt for the Timascus. Uh, it looks fine, I guess, but I don't think I'd spend the extra 20 bucks new uh, to do that. Um, yeah, I thought about the, if the Slim had this pocket clip, I'd get it. But you know, the thickness of this has never been something that bothered me about it. Um, I do like the minis in the size just because I don't like long pens in my pocket. I keep it in my front left pocket and I just, I'd rather have a shorter pen. And this is still plenty big enough to fit my, you know, long skinny fingered hands. So I'm completely fine with it. Um, I will say one thing I'm disappointed with tactile turn is not their fault. It, this has nothing to do with their fault. I want, they're making knives now. They make the tactile knife, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but a really, really cool knife. And they're about 300 bucks. I was on the waiting list. I got the email saying, hey, you can buy one now. I said, awesome. I'll have the money in a couple days. I'll click on that link. I'll go buy it. Um, it was gone. So I guess they don't hold your reservation for that long. So if you get that email, it looks sounds like maybe you got to buy it like right then. Because I waited two days and now I just get errors. So I just messaged them right before I started this video on instagram hopefully maybe i can still get one i don't know but they're getting ready for blade show i bet i won't hear back but i really want one of their knives if anybody's got one out there that they don't like um for some reason i hear they're amazing hit me up i really would like to get one of their knives i hear they're fantastic i know shabazz has one we've been talking about it offline and he loves it and we have very similar tastes so i really do want to get one i tried guys i tried but I had to wait. I was already in the process of transferring money from one account to the other, so I had to wait for to transfer, and uh, so I couldn't buy it immediately, and two days later, it wouldn't let me do it. So, anyway. All right, on to the watch. Um, something has happened to me. So, I'm a big Seiko guy, but I've never understood the huge fascination with the SKX. That said, this is my most worn watch of the last month. This is another one I got in a trade. And I intended on modding it. I thought, well, I'll see what the whole Seiko SKX thing is about. Because when these first came out, they were under $200. And they were a fantastic dive watch for under 200 bucks. Then they discontinued them. And man, the prices just shot up. Like, uh, this is an SKX 009. I looked online for it. It was like 425 bucks to get one now. That's insane. This is It's not hand widening. It's not hacking. It's got an old 7S2X movement in it. You got to do the Seiko shuffle to keep it running. 
Um, you know, Hardlex, Crystal, all that stuff. There's nothing really that special about it. I never understood why they went up so much. And I just, by the time I really got into watches, they were already in the 300 range. And I just didn't, I always got other stuff instead of getting an SKX. But then this trade worked out where I got one. And um, I was going to mod it because I thought, well, at least I'll get, to, it'll be a, you can buy lots of mod parts. It'll be fun to experiment with taking a watch part and modding it. But this came in such better condition than the guy represented it as, which is always what you want. You know, he's pointed out all these flaws. I can't even see them. It's like brand freaking new. I don't really want to mod it now. I put this, it came with a Jubilee uh, bracelet, which is jingly jangly, but I don't know. I still kind of like it. But I put this um, uh, Blue Shark pajama strap on it. I love these things. They're so comfortable. Very aptly named. Uh, they're fantastic. And you know what? After wearing this thing a lot for the last month, I, I kind of get the SKX thing. They're just charming. I don't know how else to describe it. They're they're just really excellent size. I love the case shape. They're so comfortable. Yeah, I kind of get it. It's got an old-timey movement in it. Um, you know, but man, it just it looks good. It looks really good on this strap. It's just so comfortable. The loom is awesome, which means a lot to me because I sleep with a watch on. I want to be able to tell what time it is when I wake up in the middle of the night. So I get the SKX thing now. I really do. I don't get 425 bucks. This is kind of like the, uh, <laughs> the leash buoy of the watch world, I think. But as far as watches go, less expensive. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's... Maybe like a Rolex Submariner would be the uh, sleesh buoy of the watch world, but maybe the SKX, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, I wouldn't pay that price for one. I wouldn't buy a new one at four, if you can find a new old stock one in that $400 range. I don't think I'd spend that. But if you can find a used one for a good price, or like me, get it in a trade where you get a really good deal, um, I, I totally get it. I get why people love them. It's not perfect, but it's just charming. And you can say it about a lot of Seikos. I mean, that's why I like... You could say that about me. Maybe that's why I have such an affection for Seikos. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. That wraps it up. This is a long one. But this is the format I'm going to try and do now is uh, five knives and an EDC item and a watch. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.